Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on guys? So if you can believe it, I am here at the epicenter of the e-bike retail revolution. I am at Crazy Lenny's Electric Bikes, checking out lots of lots of different electric bikes. But in particular, I also ran into Kyle from Rambo. He came up with his truck with a handful of bikes and right now we're checking out the Rambo 750. Uh, so Kyle, uh, here's Kyle by the way. Hello so, everybody. Yeah. So Kyle, tell me a, a little bit about the 750 and how it came about. Basically the 750 is our intro bike. Um, we came up with this bike a few years ago, uh, primarily for the outdoor uh, industry. It's uh, kind of a basic bike. It's a 750 watt mid-drive motor, 10.4 uh, amp hour battery, but it's uh, a bulletproof bike. We use a three-speed internal gear system and uh, we've been producing bikes here for the last uh, four years. So growing a lot in the bike market, getting into the bike shops now. So pretty excited uh, where we're to go. That's great. So yeah, Kyle brings up a good point that Rambo bikes kind of got their start doing uh, lots of outdoor uh, kind of bikes with, you know, fat tires and lots of different accessories. Actually, before we get into the bike, I, I would like to take a second because Kyle showed up with this cover for the tailgate of his truck. And this looks like a pretty cool accessory. One of the things that Rambo does very well, they have lots of accessories, this being one of them. Uh, so it's a tailgate cover that you can haul your bike with or multiple bikes. It's like it's got a little trap door so you can open up the tailgate and flop the front fork over the bikes or sorry flop the yeah right in between the front fork over the bikes there and yeah you can easily haul three bikes i mean that's what that's what we came over here with so anyways that's just one cool thing i want to tell you about the bike okay so the 750 has a lot of really cool features that are made for an off-road purpose uh, so this is actually the 26 inch and i don't want to get too distracting but back here you have the 24 inch it's the exact same bike just scaled down uh, in tire size in particular um, but same components and everything so i'm glad i was able to get that but nonetheless, both the bikes, the 26 and the 24, are called the 750, and that's based on the motor. So the motor is a Bafang BBS-02 motor that's right here in the middle of the bike. Uh, this is a mid-drive motor that puts out 750 watts of power nominal, but it peaks at 1,000. So a bike like this can easily jump up trails and haul a big load if you got something to carry back with you. Uh, it's a really good system and that's right in the middle of the bike along with this battery uh, So this is a 48 volt 10.4 amp hour battery built into the down tube here Which is really good for weight balance because you got the motor weight in the middle You got the battery weight in the middle and of course, you know the rider theoretically <laughs> who sits in the middle uh, So with that you have a lot of control when a lot of balance when you're off-road in some sticky situations speaking of uh, the bike has a four inch wide tires. These are 26 by four inch wide tires, so they have a lot of grip. If you've never tried a fat tire bike, they feel different on the road, absolutely. Um, they're not as utilized if you wanna use it in the road. However, they're very comfortable and they get with you know, some pretty good knobs on the tread like this, they can get into some really, really loose terrain, like mud, sand, and snow, places that other bikes were totally unable to get to. Uh, so, continuing on with the drivetrain system, you have a 32 tooth front chain ring right here, and that's metal with like a little metal guard that also comes up here to kind of protect you from a little bit of dust. It doesn't do it too much for grease because you don't have a second side on there that's trying to protect you. You only have this one side on there, but it still does, you know, a little bit. You might still get your pants caught in there if you want to use this for commuting, but you know, that's not really what the bike's made for. Anyways, coming along this chain back here, that's, it looks like it's into a single speed system, but this is actually an internal gearing system that's built into the hub right here. So this is a Sturmy Archer three speed hub. Um, so you don't have the derailleur that's hanging on down here, switching gears. You have this, it's all built in, all nice and tight. And this is actually a change that I'm told Rambo did in order to make their bikes a little more durable, that this system can handle a little bit more torque and it doesn't bang around quite as easily because it's all compact in there. So this is a really good system to use for the rough and tumble kind of rigors that the bike is gonna be going through. Uh, continuing on with the mechanical system, 
Uh, you do have hydraulic disc brakes, which is something I was not expecting. In a lot of bikes like this, I've seen many of them that have mechanical disc, which mechanical is okay, they work, but definitely prefer hydraulic disc brakes for their stopping power. The hydraulic disc brakes have a two pistons that kind of clamp in with pads onto this rotor. This is a 180 millimeter rotor, by the way. And that's really good because it can stop, it has a little bit more bite to it. It doesn't need as much distance to stop the, the bike as it's going. So if you got a big heavy bike like this, uh, disc brakes are definitely a must at all, just any disc brakes. But if you're gonna be carrying a heavy load with you, then these hydraulic brakes are a very thought out addition. Uh, also back here you have the magnet sensor for counting speed rotations and that is coupled by the kickstand which is kind of a rear mounted kickstand this does have an adjustment to it if you wanted to extend it a little bit to angle the bike if you park on a hill fairly often say on the side of your house but one thing i really like is that this kickstand it is mounted away from the center meaning that as you move the bike around and maneuver it say in your garage then the crank doesn't actually come into contact here it can spin all the way and as a result you don't get the bike locked up if you're actually pushing it around um, just walking next to it pulling the bike backwards it's not going to lock into position that can actually be somewhat a frustrating and for some people an intimidating thing to happen but that is totally eliminated by the kickstand being back here and moreover the kickstand is not in the total back of the bike mounted behind the axle i've seen that before and that's fine for some models but for this bike it's actually a really good feature because it gets the pedals out of the way but it's not so far back that you might compromise balance if say you're carrying a load which by the way i've kind of mentioned carrying a load because you know as you can imagine we're here at the shop where they sell these things and again going on with the accessories this is an example of one of the accessories that's pretty popular uh, this is a like a cart a little basket that you can use to carry out a trophy from the woods or if you just have a lot of stuff to carry with you and so that's again kind of talking about that kickstand that's mounted in this not quite in the rear of the bike that helps you keep some pretty good balance uh, when you're loading things up so continuing on you have 170 millimeter cranks here with the metal Welgo pedals or sorry Neko pedals these do have a reflector on them so that's very legal you know you can also always be seen with those and they have a, a little bit of a knobs on the platform here so that it can catch your shoe as it's going on to make contact uh, coming up a little bit you do have a solid seat post nothing too amazing to talk about with the seat post there other than the fact that of course it extends and the seat is actually pretty good it might not look like a lot, it certainly doesn't. It doesn't have a lot of amazing features like the springs coming out or like a, you know, a, a port to get air movement, but it has a pretty good amount of comfort. I personally like seats like this with a little bit of gel to them. The footprint is not all that wide. It's maybe say seven and a half inches or so. And the profile is not terribly big. So it doesn't, it's pretty unassuming, but I actually prefer these kind of seats. They're good uh, for myself anyway. So I kind of skipped over the battery pack a little bit. This is the down tube mounted battery that fits right in there. Let's go ahead and take it off. Okay, twist the key, pull it up and out. Okay, and this is the battery. This is a 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour battery. I think I had mentioned, has a little button down here. If you want to press that button, it'll tell you with four bars, kind of an estimate of how much juice you have left in the battery. And of course it mounts into this little spot that has a nice, cut out nice little rubber kind of uh, gasket I guess rubber grommet or gasket to go right in there kind of accept the battery and also protect it from a little bit of abuse if you wanted to go down a pretty steep or heavy incline let's go ahead and put the battery back in there and lock it into position bam there you go this is the lock for it by the way if you want to get it in there so Okay, coming up to the top of the bike, let's do a little bit of the mechanic, or sorry, electrical system. You do have a remote grip attachment right here. If you press and hold that button, that will turn on the display. This is a grayscale uh, display. Does, hopefully the glare doesn't get you too bad, but it tells you the basics, how fast you're going, your battery level, pedal assist, which is controlled by the up or down arrows. We'll press up twice and therefore we're in level two pedal assist. On the bottom, you have the trip set. By pressing the power button, it will scroll through a few things, a timer, an odometer, you know, and a few other metrics there, max speed. But when you're in the default, it still shows you all the basics right up front. 
honestly I like it when the display shows the basics they're super complicated ones that I don't really have the time for <laughs> Uh, but the pedal assist level, I should know, is a cadence-based pedal assist. So that means that as you turn the cranks, as you turn the pedals, that's what will engage the pedal assist level. And if you press the throttle here on the right-hand side, this is a thumb throttle, that will spin the back wheel. So that is uh, an override that exists with the pedal assist system. So if you're pe pedaling along like normal, you can hit the throttle and then the bike will kick into gear. Let's see if I can dance around a little bit, show you what that looks like. I'll tilt the bike so it doesn't get, uh, doesn't take off on me. Okay, the bike is tilted. And then, watch it go. So there it goes. And of course, the brakes, I don't know if I have a third hand to do it, but the brakes are actually pretty nice these hydraulic disc brakes i kind of mentioned the braking system these are like a three finger lever they have a lot of good bite to them when they're put together properly they work very well uh, this is actually the gear shifter for the internal sturmy archer um, hub uh, the internal gearing i had mentioned um, so this has a big lever on it with a nice rubber uh, cover over the end of it and you kind of like pull on that or push on that the bike really should be moving just like a regular set of gears in order to switch smoothly but that's what it looks like as it's as it's sitting when you get the bike moving and you're pedaling it feels a lot better you do have a rigid front fork uh, up on the bike you know you don't have any compression here the tires do kind of provide a little bit of cushion uh, which is good um, but yeah that's that's pretty solid uh, you do have some attachment points for fenders up on the front of the fork and also right here on the crown right in the middle um, and my personal favorite bottle cage bosses right here on the underside of the of the bike i don't know if you're really going to fit much of a bottle there but these bosses are intentionally meant for a fender to fit right here to kind of cover you up uh, another thing to look out for is the small connectors up here um, these little connectors are what power the electric system including the brakes which have an electric cutoff sending a signal to the motor to cut off power as you do the brakes as well as a connector for the display itself and also for the remote attachment okay guys so that's all the specs on the rambo 750 we're actually going to load it up into the truck and we're going to take it out to a nice dirty area where we can really see what it can do uh, right now i'm actually uh, pedaling alongside a nice a really nice uh, dirt road uh, out here in the countryside of Madison, Wisconsin. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Got nice streams and some uh, some fun trails. So if you take a look uh, behind me uh, to my left back there, uh, I went up and down that hill and it was actually kind of sticky. Uh, I didn't have the camera out the way I do now, of course. Uh, but yeah, I got to test out the bike going up and also down the hill for a little ways, probably for a, a good little bit. And yeah, I really appreciate these brakes. These are a nice set of brakes to put on the bike. You know, it's, uh, it's unfortunately uh, common to see some off-road bikes that have brakes that you really got to stay on top of them in order for them to, um, to perform well for you. Uh, but these brakes are really good. They're nice. They, once they're set right, boy, they work great. So I'm really excited. I had to kick the system up to level five to get up to a little bit of an incline um, going up the thick stuff. But man, it puts out a lot of power. So it's pretty comfy as well. You know, I was a little bit concerned about the solid fork up front thinking like, oh, that's, you know, it's kind of rigid. But honestly, I didn't, I didn't feel it too much. Um, but I should comment on the suspension seat post and meaning that there is none. This has a solid seat post, so I did have to stand up on the pedals a little bit while going over some of the thick stuff, um, just so it didn't, you know, hit too much of my backside. Um, but, you know, that's a that's a habit that you get into. That's a, kind of one of the skills of mountain biking in the first place. So if you're already comfortable doing that, then it's not that big of a thing. But if you want to get a fat tire bike like this and you kind of want a comfort aspect, then yeah, I definitely recommend looking into getting a suspension seat post probably from your local bike shop. They can probably help you out because there's lots of different sizes. But yeah, let's go ahead and head back up that hill and I'll kind of give you a rundown with the camera on the bike itself. Okay guys, I've got the camera attached pointing down to the pretty slamming motor, 1000 watts of power. So let's go ahead and give it a spin and we'll show you what it sounds like. I've got it cranked up all the way and we are ascending up a, a fairly slight hill, but there's a lot of twigs and everything. So yeah, let's go ahead and let her rip. I just hope I can balance this kind of power output. Let's go.
<laughs> okay, uh, I got to jump off the bike because this is getting uh, it's getting kind of hectic, and I got the the camera a little bit mounted up in uh, my leg uh, pathing. So, yeah, that was a pretty fun system. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me on checking out the Rambo 750. It's a really fun bike. One thing I did forget to mention when I was going over the specs that I kind of learned as a riding is that 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 gear shifter for the mechanical system, the Sturmy Archer, it uh, it takes a little bit. You know, it's not like a small little click. You kind of got to move it a little bit, kind of like from a you know like a zero degree up to a ninety degree, and then there's one in between, I guess, at forty five. So that's kind of where it sits, but. Yeah, the Rambo 750 was a lot of fun. It had a lot more power. You know, I had it up to about level five or so coming up the hill and I had to scale it back down because it was a lot of guts, a lot. So it's a really fun bike. If you're looking for this, you can also compare this with other bikes that we have on our website, Electric Bike Review. And if you go to electricbikereview.com, you'll see the full write-up for this bike, including all the specifications with a fine tooth comb and you can compare it with other bikes and other brands. Also, you can participate in the forums that we have on our website if you wanna come hang out, ask a question, something like that. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, ride safe.